Kazakh national handcrafts make up the precious roots of steppe culture. They provide an inside look into nomadic lives. The art of the nation who once lived upon the Great Steppe is pictured here through wood and iron processing, jewelry and felting. Many programs modernize the culture of hunting, falconry, horse training and racing. Take a look inside the Kazakh culture on the program Kazart. Sculpture is one of the genres of art. The sculptural works are measured in terms of height, width, and volume. While observing a painting is only possible from one plane, experiencing a carving is possible from different angles. One small detriment is, however, there is a limitation of colors that could be used. Using paint to depict human figures was used as early as in ancient Egypt. The history of drawing human figures in the steppe dates back to 3,000 years. Initially emerging in the Palaiolith era, carving then spread fast during the Saka tribe and Turkic Hanat eras. The first primitive carvings were of deities of the Western religions. Sculpture as a genre foresees two main directions, monumental and portable sculptures. The monumental sculptures serve to decorate the cities. They generally depict historical figures and are tightly connected with the urban architecture. The portable structure, on the other hand, aims to embellish interiors and big museums. The name itself suggests that the piece should be portable from one place to another. This kind of sculpture is mainly made from flexible or tough materials. <laughs> Sculptures tend to use natural materials like stone and wood or something handmade. For example, baked clay, also known as terracotta, and the alloy of different metals makes brass, which in turn makes a good flexible material to model and cast. Unlike drawing, casting, molding and carving requires a lot of physical energy and is considered a tough genre. In what it depicts, sculpture is divided into portraits, historical figures, everyday characters, symbolic characters, allegorithic interpretations of reality, and animalistic subjects. As per technique, the sculptures come in two types, round and shaped. The main materials used here are marble, wood, alloys of metal like brass and bronze, and pure metals like aluminum. This is what he used to make his works. If we stop to think about the genre, it is very unique. Not many sculptures work in the animalistic style, it is mainly used in the decorations of a human subject. The details are to show the character's features. In the Kazakhstan art history, the existence of particular periods is noticeable. For example, the painters and artists who came to Kazakhstan in the 1930s depicted what they saw in the steppe, the people involved in the agriculture and their reality in the so-called social realism. These sculptures left an important legacy of the portraits and busts of these hard-working people for us to remember and appreciate their contributions. The National Art Museum, called after Kastev, one can find many pieces that could reveal historical puzzles. One of them is the statue of the prophet Doubt. This particular piece is a copy of Lorenzo Berini's carving. This small carving breaks the old-school Barocco stereotypes so popular in the 19th century. This is Shubin's famous carving of the Russian Queen Catherine II in the portrait style. Перед нами скульптурный бюст изображающий великую императрицу российскую Екатерину II. Кстати, многие известнейшие императрицы да, российской истории были иностранками, так же, как и Екатерина II. Pay attention to how he realized the image of the queen. 
He married the image of the queen with the allegorical image of Gerda from the famous fairy tale. Her head is embellished with the traditional Russian kokoshnik decorated with bay leaves. From this we could conclude that the sculpture meant to show a Russian woman. At the same time, the bay leaves are a universally accepted symbol of a winner and a leader. The epitome of the development of sculpture in Kazakhstan is connected in the 1950s youth who studied in Russian schools. Among them, the founding father of Kazakh sculpture, the first professional sculpture, Hakim Jan Naurizbaev. Hakim Janov created one of the more famous pieces of historical figures, the portrait of Kurmangazi being one of them. For the historical figure, he used marble. Marble is generally considered to be conducive to the subject's character and hence is the best material to work with. He managed to process the raw stone in a way that allowed for preserving the essence of the rock which amplified the portrait carved above. The main reason to leave the bottom of the portrait in row was to show that in his artistic endeavors Kurmangazi found inspiration in his native land. Any artist's main goal is to communicate whatever idea in the best form possible. To do the best job possible, having the necessary mental and physical tools is not enough. Creating a scalable work that depicts a period from history requires a lot of preparation and research. The alumnus of the Almaty Art College, founded in 1938, Alexander Ponomarev, carved the portrait of the record-breaking Kalkoznik Bersiev, who harvested an unheard amount of millet in East Kazakhstan in 1945. Portraits that show the shoulder-level image are called bust. We can clearly see Ponomarev's revered to the outstanding works of the collective farm. The bust is cast from brass and is considered a historical work of art. The young artist who studied in Moscow and St. Petersburg started a new wave of development of the genre. They brought up the topic that was never discussed in art before. During the years of communism, the youth declared and propagated the idea of high achievements and valor in their monumental brass works. The monument to Shokan, Walikhanov, Amangildi, Imanov and Abai are still there and are cherished for their impact on the positive image of the city. Harmonious in their intent and realization, these monuments are truly the symbols of time. Located on the intersection of the two main streets of the city, the Abai monument has become a landmark for both locals and guests. Hakim Jan Nauruzbaev carved the monument from rock and served a good service to his native town. The meaning of the monument is as profound as its effect on the environment. You see the philosopher thinking about his nation. He almost walks into the square called after him and inevitably makes its observers wonder. Төлеген Досмағамбетов Қазақстан бейнелеу өнеріндегі 1950-шы жылдардағы сүретшілер мүсіншілер бұндарына кіреді. Жалпы Төлеген between the 1950s and 60s, Toligen Dosmangambetov joins the Kazakh squad of sculptures. He has galleries devoted to the sculptures of the historical figures. One of them, of Amangildi Imanov, is chiseled from granite. Comparing granite and marble brings one simple conclusion. 
Marble is soft and granite is hard. Showing facial features of the subject in details is almost impossible in granite. A sculpture is only left to show general features. Amangildi Imanov is a national hero, warlord and a historical figure. The granite wasn't picked for his sculpture for nothing. The toughness of the rock is to correspond to the hero's personal qualities. If the hero is strong, so shall be the rock it is chiseled from. The artist was able to merge the properties of the material with the character of his hero. The sculpture stands out with its size. The massive shape resembles that of a monumental sculpture. Hakim Zhanov works along the lines of the national motifs by creating works that uplift national identity, reminds those about its great history, peaceful lifestyle and ancient culture. Communicating one's ideas in the right way, in the right shape and context requires that the artist spend a lot of time in archives and libraries, or metaphorically speaking, dig a well with a needle. The arrival of the new technologies has given the artists many ways to express themselves. Art is a face of society, goes a saying. The park turns into an open-air exhibition of art. For sculptures, this is another way to show their works. И разрушается. Поэтому э, ну, самый ближайший подходящий материал это камень. Э, но камень он э, имеет некоторые... The public art can speak about anything, any household topic, any theme. It allows for a wide range of genres and stories. The wood sculptures do not withstand the natural conditions. Wood dries out and cracks. Hence rock is the best material despite the fact that it limits your creativity doesn't allow for more intricate ornaments. Metal is perfect for those kinds of ideas, though. Brass is an internal material but needs a lot of energy, time and money to be made into something. So I resorted to using stained copper. Gives me all the freedoms of brass but has a couple of more benefits for the lace casting in case I need it. These days we call it modern sculpture. In the 1970s and 80s, and especially in the 90s, we opened up to the Western cultures. Before then, we were locked into ourselves and didn't work outside of the Soviet Union ideas. But after the USSR fell, we saw what the Western art had to offer, and it was avant-gardism. Yerken Mirgenov, Edward, Kazaryan, Shokan Tolesh, and many more sculptures were able to merge our national motifs with the existing techniques and come up with very peculiar works that pinned our school on the global map of art. Эдуард Казарян, көптеген бізде мүсіншілер бар. Шоқан Төлеш деп айтып жатамыз осы заманауи өнер туындыларын, әсіресе өзіміздің осы қазақ халқының мүсін өнерін бірлестіріп, үйлестіріп бір ерекше туынды шығарып жүрген мүсіншілеріміз бар.